Thank you very much, dear colleagues. Good day, dear Presidium. Thank you very much for inviting me here to participate in this really serious conference, having listened to scientific and really heavy speeches. I would like to talk about the creation formation of the ozone therapy in our practice in, in the Kaliningrad Oblast and one of the, we will also talk about one clinical case which will be of interest for you. I am representative of clinical center which is in obstetrics in the Baltics University by Emmanuel Kant University. We, our scientific cathedral was established not so long ago. Bacterial phagotherapy and zoontherapy was a new thing to us for diagnostic, uh, diagnostic of embryo. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Speaking of historical aspects, in historical aspects, it is know that if without those people on the screen we would be talking today, Sean Bain was one of them and Mr. Hansler have uh, created the first resonator that could regulate the concentration of hydrozone solute that was the beginning of the ozone therapy as we know it. In 1995, in ozone therapy was like a starting point. He reasoned the implementation of ozone therapy in in gynecology and obstetrics. We recently we heard uh, the speech of a person. I forgot his name yesterday. He was from Spain. He, he spoke very interestingly about uh, using ozone therapy in gynecology and obstetrics. If I'm not mistaken, we now have a regulation document. It is called using medical ozone in anatology and gynecology. Well, to my surprise, I've never seen speeches on anatology. Maybe I haven't heard of them, but I think it is of interest. As of now, thanks to Gennady Alegovich and Tatiana Anatolia for, for having this document in Russian Federation that enables us to work and to use medical ozone in different nasologies, such as gynecology diseases. But we also have, I don't know whether you know it or not, the possibility to, 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 to purchase monographic of Gennady Alegovich, which is the second edition in obstetrics and gynecology. The paper really describes data. Okay, I'm advertising my monographic. Uh, well, send this uh, report appeared spontaneously on the spur of the moment because all the graphs that we had collected in the regions um, I helped establish uh, the ozone therapy Chernihovsk this is a logistic center the population is 45,000 people there in 2004 I first came there for the first time I first met uh, Sergei Piotrkin and Gennady Olegovich also and uh, I was inspired by the idea of ozone therapy in between 2004-2009 I conducted um, some 103 uh, procedures not only in obstetrics and gynecology but in other areas also and that's uh, the reason why like Gennady Olegovich said under his uh, leadership and guidance uh, I wrote this uh, dissertation on the combined the use of ozone and bacterial phagotherapy in combined treatment of chronic inflammatory diseases of uh, the Elvis. Uh, this is the first publication from the Nishinogari journal. By that time I had completed 68 procedures. I was interested in that, but uh, I want to tell you about the most important thing. I want to tell you how you can introduce this new technology in a new town, small town, so that uh, you can be trusted with your patients, so that you can be heard out. In 2009 in Kaliningrad, in the center of the region, 
Kaliningrad is located at the bank uh, of the uh, on the coast of the Baltic Sea. In 2009, the perinatal center opened up there. In 2017, the number of deliveries was 3,352, and the number of ozone therapy procedures in 2017 it was 1,480 procedures. In terms uh, of the establishment and integration of ozone therapy there. I would like to tell you now it's our structural unit, it's a regional uh, delivery house where all of the ozone therapy had been used before, but I don't think they were correct in this application uh, in some aspects, and most of the doctors uh, back then were opposed and averse to the idea of using uh, the, uh, the ozone therapy in, in gynecology and obstetrics. So this perinatal center then opened up, it's a third level institution and we needed to introduce new technologies and I offer those no therapies one of the methods uh, to complement the third overall therapy with this is uh, what the extra corporal uh, hammer correction uh, unit looks like uh, this is what we have see here plasmapheresis by our anesthesiologist and doctors when I'm after duty they come to me to be inspired with confidence now I would like to tell you about uh, how this works what happens uh, in this way Doctors uh, are always on the go, and it's so hard to uh, sit through a course which we give. So sometimes it uh, extrapolates onto the patient. Sometimes it was uh, difficult to overcome this barrier. We did our math, and uh, 274 patients, the number of patients that we have. Uh, performed different procedures of ozone therapy upon in uh, gynecologists 92 patients in obstetrics 182 patients uh, uh, now we have the focus on um, obstetrics uh, pregnancy termination threat is something I'd like to talk about but there's a few more points so uh, that could be which I'd also like to clarify if you want to uh, dwell upon it uh, remember that we have time limits to be short most of the patients um, that uh, had intravenous infusions of ozonized uh, cell line were because of the threat of pregnancy termination. There was a retardation of the fetus of the third degree. Well, uh, it was hard to convince uh, the doctors that the ozone therapy in obstetrics and gynecology as much as in other specialties is not an emergency measure. If the doctors use their own therapy, start uh, to follow this idea, this could discredit this method, and I'd like to avoid this happening. Low waters, uh, placenter insufficiency, uh, moderate pre explancy toxicals, uh, and uh, too much water uh, were also the factors. Uh, my personal observations here are also interesting that I would like to share with you. When uh, the ozone therapy is prescribed uh, to patients, patients ask, what is it? Some come to me and ask uh, me, what are you going to do? Because I've read some things about it on the internet, there are good and bad things of, about it on the internet. Um, so they uh, tell me when I leave it after the therapy, my eyes so will start uh, glistening. I told her, I'm not going to do anything to your eyes. And I started telling her how ozone works and. Um, uh, at the next therapy, they realize yes, so they are still glistening, their mood improves, and that um, some of them uh, compare the effect of the ozone therapy to a glass of wine. They put in a great mood and um, pregnant patients. Quite, uh, who are quite often uh, hospitalized uh, to, for a reason or for no obvious reason are all emotionally devastated um, by the ozone therapy allows uh, for some um, positive effects uh, in uh, improving the race and the spirits of our patients in um, gynecology we uh, most often use uh, the ozone therapy in combination with bacteriophage therapies now uh, we uh, had the 51 patients uh, in 2017 well, this is about half of the gynecology patients uh, in fertility at the stage of preparing for uh, additional reproductive technologies. So what we do there is a lavage of the abdomen into venous injections of saline if uh, the pregnancy doesn't occur or doesn't develop. Uh, we also apply it. Um, also, in terms of miscarriage, we do it. Um, and now I will tell you this interesting case of ours that 
uh, has um, become part of our investigation on uh, the use of uh, uh, bacterial phagotherapy in uh, the treatment of chronic antimicrotis. Uh, uh, so we can see the parameters. So it was her first uh, delivery. <sighs> It was also her first pregnancy uh, in 2006 and 2009. She had uh, involuntary miscarriage in 2017. She came to us, so we performed full clinical examinations of her. We diagnosed her of secondary infertility, chronic antimicrotis. Um, uh, we identified the somatic analysis there in 2000 after. We did a series of treatment of chronic endometritis using <coughs> ozonbacterial phagotherapy in two courses. In 2017, she got pregnant, and we were glad. It all seemed good and well, but uh, also later we identified uh, the resist uh, immunization with a titer 116. At, uh, pregnancy at week 28 as we were following the person because we monitor these patients and it says the pregnancies resist pregnancies uh, so we find a hyperdynamic type of uh, bloom brain circulation into fetal uh, transfusion had to be performed so we did four um, cortisentresis and four into um, vascular transfusions of blood without complications with an interval of two weeks at uh, week 36, uh, they had a, uh, a preliminary uh, uh, delivery she, because of the four quarters and tests cases. There was also there were other technical complications for future, like there was a problem with, with the funiculus attachment. She had a girl. Eventually, the girl is growing up, and it's all good. But uh, in conclusion, I would like to thank you, Tatiana Anatolievna Gennady Aldegovich. You are the locomotive of um, ozone therapy in gynecology and obstetrics because you're involving a lot of young people in this movement. Uh, and um, despite our demographic uh, situation being poor, the ozone therapy will remain there along with extracorporeal uh, therapies. Uh, thank you very much. Peter, any questions? Nikolai, his questions are shaping up. I'd like to thank him. Uh, Thank you very much, thank you for advertising my monography. I didn't ask you about this, but this is the only paper. Thank you, thank you. I'd like to tell you about, I'd like to turn to the information letter that you showed in your slide. It was the result of the union of uh, our center and the scientific center of gynecology and obstetrics, supported by Tiana Anatolina because of our mutual efforts came to see the light and uh, now it's a guidance for practical work of uh, obstetric specialists and gynecologists in Russia. It's signed by Akademician Serov, who is a very esteemed person. Nikolai Nikolaevich is not also a practitioner, but he's also you know, another recent. Uh, I'd like to tell you that today in this room, I'm not don't know how it will be translated. You know, in this room, Nikolai Nikolaevich is a mature doctor, and I think he's my apprentice in ozone therapy. Here we have Rajan Chana Damela, who's my first post who defended in 2005. She's my um, apprentice also, and my new aspirant uh, posted here, Tatsana uh, Kenadeva. And together with Nikolai, she now will show you the method uh, of 
the, the relative model that we prepared for you. I have this over because uh, I want to pat myself on the back by saying we have the post versions here in order to prepare for this presentation that we want to show you. Uh, we need some time for it. And Nikolai uh, needs some time to prepare for it for podcasting. Tatiana, I would like to deprive you of the pleasure of listening to your colleague. I would give him the floor now, but uh, we can't not do it. But first, I think you have to prepare your material. And Don uh, will prepare the broadcast. And please uh, uh, tell us in five minutes what you want us, what you want to tell us. Uh, please uh, get to the microphone because we have only five minutes. I'm sorry, I'm tired. My hands are tight. <laughs> 